earliest sort of memory of the car was when I was still a toddler. Um, I can still remember it really, really well. I had a little toy black BMW E34 um, that one of my parents got me, and it was just my favourite toy. Um, and it's just grown from there, really. I don't know where it's come from. My, my parents aren't really car people. No one in my family really is. Just say, was born with it, really. Just absolutely loved them from a young age. My first car, um, I sort of shared it with my mum, but it was back in 2009, I think, when I passed my test, and it was 2008 Skoda Fabia 1.63 which is the trim level, so it was, it was a great car, kind of top spec at the time, uh, very lucky to have had it. My mum let me use it a lot of the time to go to college and stuff, but ultimately it's still shared. And it was orange, so uh, my love of bright cars started there. <laughs> Following the, the Fabia that I shared um, with my mum, I bought my, bought my own first car um, when I was 19 and still at uni. Um, it was a BMW 330i Sport E46 shape, it was a saloon. Uh, not your normal student car, I know, but by that point I got myself a summer job worked tirelessly with the end goal of buying a car. And I was quite aware, you know, rear wheel drive car, got to kind of, you know, pay it respect and, you know, don't push its limits too far. But as I had it and I grew with it, I began to kind of push limits a little bit more, explore its handling ability with the DSC off um, and discovered that it was, it was just a beautiful car to drive. The new lease uh, came about after a long search. Um, one of those things, Sometimes I feel you know being a petrol actually the worst torment in the world because there are so many things you want. Trying to whittle it down to just one car is impossible. And the nature of buying you know an old used car, you, you can't really expect to just let you have a drive, to see what it's like. So you've really got to find other ways and means to get behind what you want. So I went through all sorts. I looked at Boxster S's. I looked at Z4Ms. Um, really wants an E39 M5, but just couldn't justify it. Um, but at the end of the day, this is going to be my daily car. So there had to be some compromise made. So I decided, you know what, I'll just go drive in a lease. So I went down to a local dealership who was more than happy to let me have a go. Um, and I was gutted because it wasn't the car I hoped it was. It was a totally standard 120 brake horsepower car. It's just too firm, just didn't, just didn't really enjoy the way it drove at all. Um, so I was really upset by that, but I thought, well, that, that's made it easier, dead firm it is. Then the, um, the Lotus dealer gave me a phone call and said he had another release in that I might like a bit more. It was 111S, it had semi-slick tyres on it, had harnesses, better seats, sports intake, sports exhaust, the works. So I went down and had a look at that, transformed it for me. Suddenly it was the car I'd always hoped it had been. Um, but going back, the Elite had always had a little kind of place in my heart from when I was at school. One of my school teachers had a very early S2 in laser blue. And you know, being a school car park and you know, full of relatively ordinary cars, this stuck out, you know, like a beacon. Absolutely adored that car. And from then on really, that's just what I started liking the shape. So I was so pleased that the one I drove then it lived up to all the hype and I really enjoyed it again. Then I got a message from a guy up in Buckinghamshire um, saying he had an unusual coloured um, 111 S2, 111S rather, S2, um, quite low mileage, wasn't looking for a great deal of money. Um, sent me just one picture of the car in a garage, didn't really reveal a lot, but kind of had a little feeling that this could be something. It was actually an old development car. Now when I heard this, of course, alarm bells weren't ringing and I thought, oh no, it's been ragged around a track, it's been destroyed, it's been absolutely abused and used. Um, and that's when I got in touch with the factory, who were able to tell me it was actually owned by the engineering department um, to further modify the car, to test you know, the weak components, to see what they could place to better the vehicle. Um, as part of that, this paint um, was actually developed in colour. You can pay to get the certificate from Lotus to tell you how many they've made. Haven't done it as yet, but they've told me that no more than a handful were made in the colour. So a deal was struck and uh, the rest is history, as they say. I think this this probably is one of the, the best 111s's out there. Um, you know, it, it's been very very well looked after. It's low mileage, very unusual the colour scheme. I mean, the seats as well are the later Proback seats, which if you know Lotus are are the more desirable ones. And again, you don't often find them with the two tone colour, the stripe of red down the middle on the black leather. Really, it is a very desirable package, and it, it attracts comments everywhere I go. Standard engine is the 1.8 VVC K Series engine, so it's 160 horsepower or so. Um, which in a car that weighs just under 800 kilograms means 0 to 6 in about 5 seconds or so, so plenty fast enough for me. Top speed about 135 miles an hour, but I think top speed is kind of relevant in a car like this. It's got upgraded rear lights, they're the Exige LEDs, which just look much cleaner on the car. Um, I've done a few things to it as well. It's got a hurricane induction kit, it's also got a Larini Club Sport exhaust. Um, with race pipe, so it sounds the part now, a bit more extra flow through it, and it, it just sounds fantastic. A lot of people are quite surprised when they hear it, going, that's a 1.84 cylinder, but it is, it kind of crackles, it pops, it now and again pops flames as well, 
for me, it's the perfect exhaust system on the perfect Elise. The Elise lacks power steering, it lacks ABS, it lacks brake servos, so it's a completely raw experience. And of course, it's so, so light. So with a very, very small wheel, it's quite a quick rack as well. You just, every bend is such a pleasure. And I mean, people say, and it often sounds ridiculous, but it's so true. When you find yourself on a good road in a car like this, it's like me and the car become one. And it's just this most wonderful experience where you can just push it right up to the limit, know exactly where it is, and just feel everything and just immerse yourself in the experience. And it's just beautiful, but also like down changing. Now that it's got the noise, you can just blip the throttle, nail a down change, and you feel like a driving god every time you've done it. But that's what I loved about the car. I've, I've definitely haven't explored its limits. It, its talents far outweigh mine, but that's what I love about it. It's quite noisy going to work, the roof leaks, all those things as well, but it's worth it for the performance. It's absolutely great. I mean, I probably am a bit mad having it as my everyday car, but it's so much more enjoyable having something that you know is doing one task and doing it brilliantly well. That's just so rewarding. Roof down, early morning, light traffic, just beautiful roads. And it's just once you get into that zone and you kind of, you and the car become one, it's just the most incredible experience. You know, you're nailing every gear shift, you know, the exhaust is cracking and popping and all these things as well. You're feeling the steering, you're feeling the grip through there. Just the whole experience, it's very difficult to put into words, but it's just magical. Yeah.